Good morning and welcome to Face the Nation. We are just over three weeks away from midterm election day. Voters are already casting ballots in 18 states and voting will start in eight more this week. What are they focused on? And which party do they think should be in control of the House and Senate, as well as the 36 states where there are ongoing contests for governor? Our new CBS News Battleground Tracker poll shows the Republicans are still favored to capture the House with an estimated 224-seat majority. That's six seats more than they need to take control. Our last estimates showed Democrats narrowing the gap, but that momentum has stalled. CBS News Elections and Surveys Director Anthony Salvanto is here to tell us why. Good morning to you, Anthony. What indicates momentum is stalling and why? Good morning, Margaret. So this is the first time since we've updated the tracker throughout the summer and into the early fall where Democrats haven't been cutting into that Republican lead. And it comes at a time when people think the economy is getting worse. In fact, two thirds of people say that. Now, we've gotten bad news this week about inflation and the way that people interact with that often is gas prices. Well, there's been this stark turnaround. It was in August, people thought they saw gas prices going down. Now, majority says they think that they're going up in their area. So that's one point. But we wanted to understand, how does this connect politically? So I asked specifically, who's responsible for this? And are the Democrats and Joe Biden responsible for this? And the answer is somewhat. People understand that there are other factors there. They know there's global factors. They know there's supply issues. But Democrats are on balance seen as having been more harmful than helpful. Now, a president is always somewhat tied to their economy. And Joe Biden, when asked, gets some responsibility for this, not necessarily a lot, but two thirds of people do say they think he and the administration could be doing more. Mm. So all that nets out. Democrats are still losing people for whom the economy is the most important issue. They're still trailing with people who say that their financial situation isn't good. And that is part of the reason that stalled. I, I should add this. Up until now, we've talked a lot about the abortion issue because yeah. that's been underpinning a lot of those Democratic gains. It is still critical. Democrats are still winning voters who prioritize the abortion issue. But the thing is, there are not more of them in the electorate now than there were last month. So it's always been this fight about what is this election about to the extent that Democrats cannot make it more about the abortion issue than it has been. That helps keep those those balance of that balance of power right. in place. And turnout is always a factor. We know voter turnout is typically higher in that group 65 and older. Mm -hmm. For people on fixed incomes, inflation is really painful. It, what are you seeing? It's really a concern. I'm glad you raised it because what happens is they show concern about inflation, about prices. They also show concern about the stock market because, you know, retirees might have money in the market, of course. So that's out there as well. You're right. They do vote in our models. They are showing up. They are saying they're going to show up. And that's typical for a midterm. So it's really, really an important voting block, Margaret. So, Anthony, what could change here? Yeah, let's look at the possibilities that we can see in the data. Right now, the Republicans have a turnout advantage. More of them say they're enthusiastic. More of them say that they're definitely going to vote. What could get the Democrats in contention to maybe hold the House? It's young people. If young people were to show up more than they say they're going to, you plug that into the, into the model and the Democratic seat number goes up where they're right in contention to maybe get a bare majority. So if you want to know how the Democrats could hold the House, it's young people showing up more than they say they will. On the other hand, let's talk about that Republican turnout advantage. There are so many close congressional districts that it wouldn't take very much for even more of them to flip to the Republicans. So if their turnout advantage goes up even a little bit more, a lot of those seats are going to fall their way. And the model would estimate they would get into the 230s. And that would be an even larger majority. So your takeaway there is, yes, a lot of this comes down to turnout. But that is specifically how. Anthony Salvanto, you're going to be busy. Thank you very much.